on the bail application for some of the alleged fake passport syndicate accused has been postponed till Friday. A number of the suspects appeared before the Krugersdorp Magistrates Court today. They were of course arrested in a sting operation at a Home Affairs office in March. A Pakistani national believed to be the kingpin was also arrested. For more on this, reporter Govan Whittles joins us. Hi Govan, so you're in court today. It's a fascinating case um, and it has many layers and many circles of how it alleged operated. What do we know about this alleged kingpin? We do have more information about who he is and how long he's been in the country. He's a 38-year-old Pakistani national. His name is Arfan Ahmed, um, and he's been in the country for 11 years, Sally. That's what he told the Krugersdorp Magistrates Court. He's married to a South African, and they have two children who are South African citizens. What's interesting here is the kingpin denies um, any involvement in the fake passport syndicate. This is despite him being arrested and caught red-handed inside the Krugersdorp Home Affairs Office after being set up in a sting uh, that involved under, undercover uh, Home Affairs officials as well as officers from the Hawks. Um, but he still denies that he is the kingpin. He denies being part of the syndicate. He says he's a legitimate businessman. He says he's got four uh, cell phone shops uh, from, that are across Gauteng. Uh, he says that these are the legitimate businesses that he runs and he wants to be released on bail. And he told the court that he's not a flight risk, uh, even though he has a Pakistani passport, a real Pakistani passport. Uh, he's willing to, to forfeit that um, and believes that because he's been in the country for 11 years and never left the country, except to go to a wedding in Botswana for a weekend. That means he's, he's not a flight risk. But let's have a listen to what his lawyer had to say uh, when he read the affidavit into the record uh, while Ahmed uh, was applying for bail. But I've got three other charges in the merits. After my arrest, I was informed that the charge against me is fraud. This later changed under the Corrupt Activities Act. Then later today, it changed again. Um, the charge changed again, Your Worship, to a charge in terms of the uh, Organized Crime Act, Your Worship. 3.2, I was informed by my legal advisor that the evidence given in the bail application may be used against me in the trial. Due to the aforesaid, I do not wish to elaborate on my defense in detail, other than to state that I intend to plead not guilty. I reserve my right to deal with my defense in full at the right forum and during the trial proceedings. I would, however, like to state further that I'm not sure why these charges are being leveled against me. The story on the media also keeps on changing, and I have not actually been informed by anyone how I am linked to these charges. 3.4 makes it extremely difficult to give any version when one is not given any facts as to the charges against you, as to what the charges against you are. Interesting how he says he doesn't understand how he's linked to the charges. When you, you say that he was actually caught in the Home Affairs offices illegally during the sting operation. Tell us a little bit more about how this operation was working um, and the other accused. So in total, 27 people appeared today. Um, one would, in, one would presume that if they had access to the Home Affairs offices, if they were working in the back offices, they must have done it. Uh, colluding perhaps with some corrupt Home Affairs officials. Tell us about the other accused. Yeah, so the other uh, corrupt Home Affairs officials that have been colluding with the syndicate, some of them have already been put through disciplinary processes in the Department of Home Affairs and dismissed. And we understand right now the NPA is considering charges against those people. And then for others, we understand the Hawks still plan to make arrests of Home Affairs officials who would later um, also be drawn into this trial to expose the syndicate. So that's on the Home Affairs front. On the local front, there were 14 South Africans and 14 foreign nationals who were arrested in the sting operation um, in the Krugersdorp Home Affairs Office. And today, those are the people that appeared in court. And what we saw in court was that most of them are Somali nationals, um, and a large majority of them were in the country or are in the country illegally um, at the time when they were arrested. But a few of them do have refugee papers. Um, the alleged kingpin himself is, does also have 
also has asylum seeker papers as well as a partner visa. So not all of them are illegal immigrants. But they are taking the stand, being charged with racketeering uh, because of the way that the syndicate operated. But the majority of the people who were in court, in court today, Sally, were uh, South Africans who were planning to sell their identity for 500 rand and Somali nationals who were in the country illegally who wanted to buy that fake passport for 4,500 rand. That's important because the state is also trying to turn some of these guys uh, onto its side to make this, the case against the alleged kingpin stronger. But it does already have an ace up its sleeve. One of the people that was in the dock was the driver for the alleged kingpin who said in his bail applications affidavit that all he did was to drive around the the alleged kingpin's vehicles and he had no idea what was going on inside the building in the home affairs where the cars were parked um, and as soon as the sting started the hawks pulled him out of the car and he proceeded to show them exactly who the car belonged to inside i.e. identify the kingpin so it does seem that law enforcement will find some cooperation uh, within those that are accused but for now they're still busy reading the affidavits into the record and there's 27 of them so that's 27 affidavits plus support affidavits for those who are applying for bail so this bail application is likely to be a very lengthy process did you get any indication today Govan, from what happened in court how long this operation has been going on how many fake passports have been issued because one wonders first of all people holding those fake passports is there any way because it was clearly done through home affairs channels it is the real thing just incorrectly um, you know, acquired. Uh, is there any way uh, for law enforcement to go after those who got fake passports and how many passports might be in circulation? It does appear that the Hawks have been investigating this for over a year. Um, just when you look at the scope of, of the syndicate's work, and they were wanted in six provinces, Sally. So there are fake passports from home affairs offices in six provinces in the country that are currently circulating among illegal foreign nationals. But what the Home Affairs Department has done is to V-list all of these passports uh, so that when these suspects or these illegal foreign nationals try to use them, uh, they would be picked up on the system and they would be arrested, um, and then that information would be added uh, to the investigation uh, before this trial gets underway. It does look like it was a large operation with hundreds of people having received fake passports. That's a conservative estimate at the moment, but the Hawks say that the investigation isn't finished. They're still looking into some aspects of it, so we'll be able to get a final number once this matter gets to trial. Thank you so much for all that update, reporter Govan Whittles.